Against the backdrop of all of that, Britain and Canada are launching talks on a new free trade deal. Anne-Marie Trevelyan is UK's Trade Secretary. Hi, Secretary. Pleasure to welcome you to studio here. Thank you so much. It's I, a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you making the time. I, of course, have many questions about the potential uh, trade pact between mm -hmm. the UK and Canada, but I do want to start with uh, what I know our audience is very interested at this mm -hmm. moment in, and that is, of course, what's going on between uh, the West and uh, the rest of, uh, and Russia, actually, in particular, mm -hmm. and, and the meeting that's taking place right now between mm -hmm. Uh, your prime minister, our prime minister, and other world leaders. In particular, the call from President Zelensky for more lethal aid, uh, mm -hmm. a, a familiar call at this point. I know that the UK has supplied uh, air defense systems to mm -hmm. Poland uh, just recently. Why not to Ukraine uh, directly? So the UK and indeed uh, others have uh, come together to provide a lot of uh, lethal aid already. Uh, some of the uh, end laws, the uh, shoulder Weapons have been provided from uh, Northern Ireland, uh, from the UK and others, and we continue to do that and to uh, work with uh, President Zelensky uh, with the uh, defensive uh, arse that he has. Many, many British companies actually have come forwards uh, wanting to support uh, and help in ways that can give uh, Zelensky and his extraordinary people, those uh, young women and women who have all you know, picked up arms to defend their country, uh, the tools they need. And I know that across Europe and more widely, uh, countries who are wishing to support and help them to defend uh, their great nation of Ukraine will continue to support. Uh, let me rephrase the question a little bit then. I I is there a discussion going on about supplying uh, air defense systems in particular, beyond, and I in no way taken away from the lethal aid that's already been mm. supplied to Ukraine, but is there a discussion about actually making that uh, supply or making that supply available to Ukraine directly? So as you say, uh, we are uh, supporting through our NATO uh, channels, uh, our Polish friends, uh, with uh, some more air defence because the Poles are feeling particularly nervous and understandably, I think. Uh, they are, you know, right on that eastern flank. Uh, and whilst uh, the Russian tanks have come uh, through Belarus towards Ukraine, the anxieties that Poland feels are completely understandable. And as a NATO ally, we want to make sure uh, we can provide reassurance and support uh, as uh, they wish. And that continues to be the case. Uh, I'm not privy to the detailed discussions that the Defence Secretary uh, has more fully. I'm just very aware that he has drawn together a large coalition of uh, willing partners who want to support uh, in as many ways as they can uh, Zelensky's efforts to defend his country. In Canada's case, uh, we have supplied a number of shipments of lethal aid, but our own capacity to do so mm -hmm. without buying from other partners and sending there mm -hmm. is, is now exhausted. Where does the UK sit on that? Is there, is there more lethal aid available there to supply Ukraine should the need arise, putting aside the, the question of air defence system? So I think we are seeing a continual, obviously, uh, set of requests from President Zelensky and his uh, military leaders, uh, but also uh, across the world, you know, Western allies looking uh, to find ways to support. And uh, we are seeing certainly uh, increases in production uh, with some of our British companies in ways that can uh, support that. Uh, and indeed, uh, other countries are providing funds where they wouldn't necessarily uh, be able to supply the lethal aid themselves uh, and we are helping to source the relevant defensive uh, equipment for uh, Ukrainian military. If, if you're sourcing it though, is that outside of the UK's own, uh, like the, 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 the armed forces in the UK's own supply? Uh, so we're working with our defence industries, uh, who obviously supply uh, our, our armed forces, but also indeed supply others uh, to ask them to uh, increase their production as well. And they need to focus in on the certain specific uh, lethal aid that can be of most use most urgently uh, to Zelensky and his forces. OK, let me make a turn to the, to the purpose of your trip here. And that is the kind of formal start to negotiations for uh, a trade agreement that would replace the interim one that's in place right now. When you envision what that might look like, how does it differ that, from what was in place with CETA? So we're really excited about launching this and I've uh, been able to uh, formally launch with Minister Ng the uh, next generation FTA with, you know, sort of 2.0, uh, which is going to be, uh, we hope, very much, uh, much broader, uh, looking to take, you know, if, if what we have now is a baseline, think about some of those wider areas about SMEs, about women's empowerment, 
uh, thinking about how we want to drive through our trade the issues around the challenges that we face around climate change, working together through procurement, uh, through green trade, and looking at all those tools that will make it easier and slicker for Canadian and UK businesses to work together. We already have an enormous uh, bilateral trade activity, £19 billion uh, in 2020, which is amazing. And there are 100,000 uh, British workers that go to work in Canadian Base, uh, owned businesses in the UK every day. So we have a really strong relationship already, which is fantastic. But we want to find the right tools to help energise business to find new ways to grow those uh, exports and imports between us both and to share the expertise to help us tackle some of those big questions uh, like uh, infrastructure and green trade and use our mutual skills to really try and crack some of these big challenges. So there's some really exciting things we're going to bring together uh, and uh, our teams formally meet, uh, our officials formally meet next week in London to kick off uh, the detail. And I've read that you th that you anticipate it'll take about a year and, and I think you've already come up with a with a trade pact with um, Australia and, and New Zealand. Is it, it, are, are you basing your expectations here on the context there, or how, why is that the, the time frame that you're thinking? So, for me, every bilateral trade deal is unique. Um, and as you say, we've just uh, signed a, a trade deal with Australia just before Christmas uh, and with New Zealand just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, with Canada, we, d you know, we don't know what we want to do is a really quality agreement. That's really important to uh, Ministering and I. So it's quality over speed. Uh, there is a sort of two year framework built in is, is our is our you know kind of roadmap. But I'm I'm hopeful and quite excited that we may well be to for that. I think it's really important to both of us that we uh, think and we've heard already in initial stages from all our stakeholders about what's important to them. And as our negotiating teams come together, we'll be able to pool all that information that we've both gathered from our uh, respective sides and think about what a really uh, comprehensive deal can look like. From what I've read, just before I let you go, one of the sticking points or one of the, the hopes Canada has is to be able to supply beef. And, and the issue in the past has been around CETA standards or European standards for hormone-treated beef. Do you anticipate any movement on that? Are you willing to move on that at all? So we're looking, we're looking across uh, so many areas, and I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing how that goes. In terms of uh, things around food standards, the UK has some very uh, clear food standards, which we uh, do not result from, and those will not change. Uh, but that doesn't mean that as we look uh, more widely at other uh, aspects that we want to do that. And I think there's some really interesting discussions there. We've had uh, through our Australia discussions uh, quite a big um, conversation across the UK because obviously when we were within the EU uh, we had a, a whole framework of rules which were you know made within 28 uh, countries as we become once again a sovereign independent nation and we're making our own trade deals uh, we want to set out what our vision is for our UK but in terms of uh, food food standards that are set uh, I think they will be staying the same. So no beef but maybe something else. Lots of things I hope. <laughs> okay thank you very much Secretary pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.